Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Backstage Bimbo TV. Oh, but not for much longer because as you guys know, I'm changing the name. So I think what I'm going to say, welcome back to Cocktails and Rocktails with Notorious Groupie Allison Rouse. That's right, folks. That's the new name. I'm pretty sure. If you think I should do it with something else, put your suggestions down in the comments. This is my book, We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie me written and lived by me no ghost writers here as you can tell it's not perfect but neither was my life and that's true to life right there all right so again welcome back you guys welcome for all the amazing suggestions to help me grow this channel i love that we're all participating in growing this i i just i cannot even tell everybody how truly much i appreciate it how much i love everybody here Really, thank you so much. And I know sometimes I can neglect emails and stuff, but life is happening with me right now and things get crazy. So I'm sorry, I will do my best to answer emails as quickly as I can, especially long ones. So anyway, welcome back this week. So today, Cocktails and Rocktails, we're gonna talk about a band that I haven't vlogged about since the first one of the first videos over a year. All right, folks, we're talking about the Scorpions. This is this is the last time I saw them. We're going to kind of amalgamate this and um, this one together. This is 91, February of 91, and this is, as you can see, 94. This was actually the last concert I went to in Salt Lake City right before I moved up to Seattle with Kristen. So, that's going to be a little story about that. And to celebrate today's Cocktail Rocktail, we're going to have the Scorpions. Because, you know, I had a scorpion a few times. Got bitten, not stung. <laughs> so everybody grab your stingers, kick up your feet, and let's have a little Cocktail Rocktail, shall we? Cheers, big ears. Mm-mm. So good. Woo. Can taste that brandy and for just to let you guys know always look in the description the link to my book is down there the link to my merchandise I do have a patreon channel that I have been kind of neglecting because I don't know what to do with it but I do now all my live videos live question and answers are going to go to my patreon members and my patreon account only so stay tuned that's still kind of being worked out I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do in the beginning with it and everything. So we'll go from there. And thank you guys for everybody over at Patreon that has stuck around for so long. I, sorry that I've been lame over there, but you guys have not, so you rock. Thank you so much. All right, so this time with the Scorpions, oh shit, I lost my place. It was the Green Pass that you guys just saw. Rewind, pause. So we were all hanging out the night before and a lot of people don't realize, you know, groupies just don't go to the hotel bar. And I know that's where a lot of my stories start, but we do a lot of other things like go to the Alpine Slide, have picnics up at Deer Valley, um, you know, go out and do race cars and putt putt golf. And a lot of times dinner. Dinner is a big thing when you're hanging out with the band, get together, go because it's just the road habit, you know. Check in, relax for a while, meet up at the hotel bar, decide where you're going to go have dinner, have dinner, come back, go to the hotel bar. But on some days off, when you have more than one day off, you get to do cool stuff like get kicked out of the temple grounds for asking wrong questions. Lars. Well, not the right questions that the Mormons couldn't answer type of thing. Let's just put it that way. So anyway... This is one of those nights. A bunch of us, you know, in the road crew, Danny, my old roommate, Kim, um, Lo you know, Klaus, myself, a bunch of us, Rudolph, and the Scorpions take, they have, at the end of the tour, they always have a really awesome dinner for the crew. Like, they just take out the whole crew for dinner, drinks, enjoy their company, say thank you. I mean, they're really cool guys. So this was just, you know, probably about 10, 12 of us going out to dinner one night, and we decided to go to Benny Hanna's. 
Oh, I'm so, I think they were, I can't decide what to drink, you guys. I'm double fisting today because I just got done filming one thing. I, I, you know I want the beer, so I'm good. But at least I'm drinking with you guys. No, I'm not fooling. I'm so not fooling around. And neither were we with our alcohol this night at Benny Hanna's. Because as you know, Benny Hanna's is the style where they cook in front of you. They do the really cool chef th theatrics and stuff. And there's sake involved. Lots of sake involved. In fact, I have the sake set out there. <laughs> From this night. Like I said, they were so glad the Scorpions and their friends chose their venue for that night's dinner antics. Dinner show, but it wasn't the chef putting on the show. Well, it kind of was. Anyway, so we all arrived there. We're all having a good time. We're all in high spirits. We're laughing. We're joking around. There's some portly male prostitute things going on with a couple guys in the crew. and Couldn't sell them. Oh, saved my life. Anyway, so, and I'm sitting there with Klaus. We're talking. We're just all kind of Danny's in her own little world with her guys. So is Kim. I'm in mine. Like I said, we're all just kind of conversing around. Well, as I'm drinking my sake, I decide it gets cold, so I push it out onto the grill. Not far, not to where the guy's cooking. He's out there, he's doing his thing, and we're paying attention. We're like, yay, cool, oh, because we've never been to Benny Hanna's before. But you know, you want to respect, because they do, those chefs do a lot of really cool stuff, and they make some good food, and they go out there, and they work their asses off and they are awesome don't get me wrong but our energy and our little conversations and our alcohol is way more awesome this night so I push it out there I'm trying to warm the sake up and the chef keeps pushing it back I'm like hey and I push it out there I'm like I just want the warm sake so then he starts flipping the shrimp tails in all of our drinks and we're like what the fuck dude what the fuck don't be it I'm like I don't care I'll eat the damn fr shrimp tail I'm old school. My mom ate the shrimp tails. They do in Asian countries eat shrimp tails. So, you know, and this kind of becomes our fight because he's trying to get all the attention. He's getting exasperated because there's only a couple guys really paying attention while the rest of us are just hooting and hollering all over the fucking table. Drinking a little more. See, I'm, I don't know which way to go. So, yeah. That happened, and they started getting mad, and I just kept putting it out there. The chef started yelling at me, and the guys were like, hey, hey, chef, mellow out. Allison quit putting this stuff on the grill. They were balanced the situation out that got taken care of. Well, the chef had a bit of an attitude the rest of the night, and whatever. Kind of was, didn't really do a whole lot more, got mad. And don't worry, don't worry I apologize to him and stuff, and we tipped him very very well as we do because I'm a former stripper who lived off tip, tips basically you know I so this is how much you're going to give me <laughs> pretty much so when I tip people I tip them with that in mind that people live off tips so anyway and we're pushing all this stuff on the, then he just gets mad and I don't know what was going on with Danny and her guys but some chairs fell over and it kind of created a domino effect for the next three people, which meant plates fell. Mm -hmm. Yep. The chef had to tell me to stop making out with Klaus. But I... Why? I... What? He's a good kisser. Want to try him? Because I highly recommend. <laughs> but No. So they were kind of all frustrated with us by the end of the night. We stayed past closing time. I believe closing time was around 10.30, 10 o'clock. We were there till 11, easily. Again, big tippers. We took care of them. I, 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 that doesn't justify. We weren't being total assholes. We were just involved in our own little rock and roll party. You know, we were just hungry and wanted Benny Hanna's. And so that, that happened. They told us to leave. So we left. We left and I went to bed with Klaus and the next show the next morning we went up to the show well they went up to the show me and Danny and Kim went and got ready drove up to Park City because they were playing this former venue called Park West um, 
it's not there anymore. It's where it used where the ski jumps are and stuff for the Olympics. That used to be Park West. That used to be a big concert arena. Not big, but a really cool outdoor arena. Just a really awesome place where you could see killer shows. Not a overblown crowd. You know, Duran Duran played there. Scorpions, um, Def Leppard, a lot of bands. So we go there. We get our passes. And we go cruising backstage into the dressing room. And I, I remember what I was wearing. And this is um, Winds of Change. Was that was this the time when Winds of Change had to have been? Because I was wearing this jacket that was black, white, and red. Had these different panels on it. But it also had... And this is when the wall came down. When Russia was leaving the communist behind. And they had done the song and stuff. It's not the bastards of Russia that we know now. But it was a Russia that was trying to be a better Russia at the time. And so it had all these Russian stuff on it. And first person who sees me is their drummer at the time, Herman Rarebell. He's not with them anymore. Hasn't been for a while. But he sees my jacket. He's like, oh, can I have the jacket? And I'm like, no. Because I wasn't wearing anything under it but a bra. I, you know, just had my bra, my little, my little girls, my B cups pushed up. And... I was like, no, no. And he was just like, I love it, but I want it. I'll buy it off you. I'm like, no. And it wasn't that expensive of a jacket. It was just, I no, you're not taking my jacket. It was nice cut on me. I like the, and it was more like a suit jacket, not like a coat coat jacket, but a suit jacket with all these cool designs on it. And then I get past Herman Rare Barrel, Herman, and I walk in to see Klaus, and he's standing with his back to the mirror, and he's like looking at his butt, looking, and he's like, does my butt look big in this pants? Does it look bad, my love? And I'm like, dude, your butt's like this big. How can it look big in your spandex? Because he had the black spandex. They were getting ready to go out on stage. You know, and I'm like, what? What? How can you? And he just kept doing it, like bending over. Like we would check our, our yoga pants today to make sure you can't see through them. <laughs> type of thing. So I was, Hmm. Okay. That kind of made me wonder because I was like, you know, I don't know if I can date a man who's more worried about his ass than I am my own. You know what I mean? It's like, I need a man to know his ass is cute because Klaus does have a cute little ass because he's not like real tall. He's my height. He's probably 5'6". I was always taller than him in heels, but you know, he's a, he's a cool guy. I Yeah, I can't date a guy who's more worried about his ass than I'm worried about mine. At least the way it looks in jeans. You know what I mean? You know you're comfortable, you're not. So that kind of, you know, kind of turned me off a little. In a way. But still hung out with him because I liked hanging out with Klaus. Klaus. He was a sweet guy. So anyway, we say goodbye. Nothing crazy eventful. We all go out back down to Salt Lake City. We're just sort of hitting the hotel bar afterwards. We made sh They stayed open for us after the show hung out, had a great time. As usual, morning kisses. See you next time you're around. And this was the next time they were around. Right there. Oh, here's some more Slayer ones. This is when we were out with Slayer, Machine Head, and Biohazard. Oh, Logan. My bones. Anyway, so we're hanging out. Danny couldn't make it to the show. We were put on the guest list, so it was a bummer, but she couldn't make it to the show that night. So I ended up going with, was I think I went with Kristen, because this is right before Kristen and I moved to Seattle. This was the last show in Salt Lake City. This was our swan song in Salt Lake City as the group be seen as we knew it, because a lot of people don't realize if you watch my early videos, Salt Lake City was known as the groupie capital of the world at throughout the 80s and into the early 90s. But once we all just sort of left, it just wasn't the same. The dynamic wasn't there. The energy, the partnerships, the friendships, you know. Oh, sorry. Me and my bangs. But yeah, so this was our last show. So we're hanging out. I don't think they were in town the night before. They might have. I don't think they were on this one. You can't expect me to remember everything over 30 years of rock and roll, you know. 
but I don't think they were in town the night before. We just went to the show and I said hello to Klaus and was hanging out in the dressing room and goofing off and wanted to go out. And, you know, as groupies do, you leave the dressing room around 15 minutes before the band goes on stage. Let them get their exercising in, their get their mood in, you know, kind of do a little rehearsal, get their rock star on. So we patiently wait on the side of the stage. And as I was waiting on the side of the stage, I look and I see a roadie. <laughs> because you know what? Groupies realize that the roadies are part of the family. We're all out there doing the same thing. It's okay to date guys on the road crew, ladies. Don't treat them like shit. Don't discount them. Don't think you're higher than them. Don't think it's not okay because somebody that calls himself a muse said, well, I don't date the road crew. That was a jab at me. Well, bitch, I do. Because they're fucking guys, too. They're, and sometimes the rock stars are assholes, and you don't give a fuck about any of them. You don't want to sleep with them. And you just happen to look over, and there's this really hot, long-haired, I mean, he English and dark, not, you know, he's a uh, Far Eastern Indian and just beautiful long hair. And I was just like, hi, daddy. Hmm. And my sights got set elsewhere. And I didn't leave the show with Klaus that night. I left with the roadie and a new number. And I saw him a few other times. Flew to Denver, where he lived at the time and stuff. You know, cool guy. Hung out for a couple years, a few times for a couple years. Really enjoyed his company. It was what it was while it lasted. And we both went on our merry ways. I probably went on my merry way with Vincent Paul or Steve Jones or someone like that. I was probably going on my merry way with both of them by the time, you know, things ended with the roadie. So, yeah, that was kind of, there's a little more insight into my scorpion story. Like I said, not really crazy and wild. The people at Betty Hanna's don't like us. That's for sure. Klaus was kind of, when I left, I, I don't even remember, like, what happened after the show? I just remember like leaving and because I had gone, I actually saw the roadie and I went and made out with him and other stuff. And, you know, because he was hot and I was just like, well, kind of over Klaus at the, and not over in a bad way. It just, it had run its course type of thing. And I was ready to run a race with someone else. <laughs> and that happened to be the hottest guy that I got my attention on. <laughs> Told you. Man eater. I should make some man eater shirts for my merch. You guys, it's all down in the description too. My book, my merch, my Patreon, the drink of the day. Everything's down there where you can find our local beers and stuff. You can click on and go to their brew houses. But yeah, check check that description. Anyway, so yeah, that's kind of how rock and roll goes sometimes. And it's not, people always think it's the rock star's choice. It's never the man's choice, honey. It's always the woman's. Well, our bodies are our bodies and nobody should ever dictate. No government, no man, no woman, no parent, no nothing should dictate anybody's body but the person living in it. Do I have my stance clear on that? Okay. So, yeah, but that was my choice that night to not go with Klaus. He was bummed. He wasn't an asshole about it. I just said, well, I've got to go home and gave him a hug. And they all went on their merry way back to the hotel. And I waited for my roadie. Who I rode, rode, rode a few more times over the years. So that worked out well, I think. You know, because like I said, he was hot. He had the long ass, just hot. English accent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, there you guys go. Last time with the Scorpions. Couple last times with the Scorpions on their tour. Bunch of really cool guys. Like I said, they're so good to their crew. They're awesome with their groupies. They're so much fun. Klaus has total dignity and is a sweetheart. But like I said, things just run their course and that was that. So, alright guys. You know what I'm going to say. Hit that subscribe. And for the 53% of you that are still just haunting the channel and watching, come over. We're going through a lot of changes over here. There's some really cool stuff. And I'm going to say it and make it official. Thank you guys for tuning in to Cocktails and Rocktails with Notorious Groupie, Allison Rouse. Woo! We did it. 
we're coming forward. So everybody subscribe, hit the like button, hit my bells, and share me like I was shared in the 80s. Oh no, that came out so wrong. Spread me like I spread my legs in the 80s. All right. See you next time on Cocktails and Rocktails, babes. Cheers, big ears.